Good evening, everybody, and we welcome you into the Eagle's Nest here on the campus of Hilton Head Christian Academy, where tonight the Covert Air High School Basketball Series continues with the Hilton Head Christian Academy Eagles taking on the Golden Warriors of John Paul II. I'm Chris Tremblay, and this is the second meeting between these two teams this year. They met back on January 12th. JP2 came out on top 67 of 41, but that might not matter tonight what that result was because that was all on the strength of a second quarter run by them where they outscored Christian Academy 25 to two. Looking at these two teams, John Paul II comes in at 11 and 11. They're seven and three in the region. They're playing terrific ball right now. They've won seven of their last 10. They're averaging 56 points a game and their big guns, Amir Cherry, the freshman six footer, he's averaging 18.3 points per game. Junior Rashad Batiste, he's averaging 17.6 points a game. They'll be the two to watch for JP2. For Christian Academy, they come in at 5-11, 4-6 in the region. After a slow start this year, they're coming on. They've won three of their last four. When we talk about Christian Academy, we're talking about a young team. And when I say young, I mean young. They have on their roster two juniors, three sophomores, four freshmen, and one eighth grader. That's a young team, but certainly a team that's looking to the future to do well. Their captain's out there, Floyd Hargrove. He's going to be running the point. He's averaging eight points a game. Brennan Students, he's sort of Mr. Everything for Christian Academy. He's averaging seven points a game. Both of these teams definitely want to win tonight. For JP2, it would keep their playoff hopes alive. We have a big crowd. We know everybody's ready. When we come back here on the club car of Hilton Head pregame show, we're going to talk to the coaches right after this. Club Car of Hilton Head, an authorized dealer of the finest golf, utility, and transportation vehicles in the industry. We have a full selection of electric, gas, PTV, golf, and utility vehicles. We are family owned and operated and value our customer relationships. Fully staffed with factory trained technicians and can service your cart at your home or business. We provide an outstanding customer experience from sales to service. Come check us out. We are proud to be Hilton Head's only authorized Club Car dealer. When it comes to air conditioning, bigger is not always better. An oversized system uses too much energy and it won't reduce the humidity levels, leading to dampness, mold, and microbacterial growth. Take this environmental tip from Covert Air. And we welcome you back into the Club Car of Hilton Head pregame show, joined by John Paul II head coach, Stacy Benedict. Stacy, thanks so much for spending a little time with us. My pleasure, my pleasure. Let's sum up this season. Let's get right into it. It's been a pretty good year. A lot of good things have happened. It has. You know, we really bumped up the non-conference schedule this year. Um, you know, we were 11-1 and one in the non-conference last year and didn't make the state tournament. So we figured if it's all going to be about region play, we wanted to get ourselves prepared for region play. So our schedule, you know, we played Pinewood Prep and May River High School and Benedictine High School. I mean, we really made the schedule hard, but it has it has helped. You know, we're 7-3 and three in the region. Um, you know, got a chance tonight to uh, see if we can secure a playoff spot and then you know see how much further we can move up over the next couple nights well that's where i was going next what do you feel at this point you need to do moving forward with this game and other games that are happening bethesda plays hilton head prep tonight what do you think how do the chips need to fall for you to get into the pre um, postseason well we have to focus on tonight um you know the one thing about christian academy they're not very big but they're going to be very well coached they're going to play very very hard um, and if our kids aren't ready to play, it's going to be a battle for four quarters. So take care of business tonight, secure that spot, and then we'll think about Bethesda tomorrow night and see if we can't, you know, go get that second spot in the region. You have a fairly young team, only four seniors on the team. Let's get right into the meat of it. Let's talk about freshman Amir Cherry. Uh, he's a special kid. Uh, he doesn't know how good he could be yet, um, but he's, uh, he has all the gifts. Uh, he can score the basketball. He can defend the basketball. Uh, once he learns how good he can be and, and what it needs, what the work that he needs to put in to make that happen, he's going to be really. He's the second leading scorer in the region. Uh, I've been calculating, you know, all the all region team, and um, he's the second leading scorer in the region as a freshman. He's he's a pretty special player. Coach, best of luck tonight and moving forward. We look forward to a great game. Thank you so much for having us. When we come back, we're going to have Hilton Head Christian Academy coach Mac Temenin right after this. You're watching the Club Car of Hilton Head pregame show. Covert Air. Covert Air. We support the education and athletic programs for all of Beaufort County. Have a great year. 
for all your heating and air conditioning no one can compare at georgia southern university we're setting the standard for higher education in southeast georgia on three exciting campuses in savannah statesboro and hinesville we're offering more opportunities for hands-on learning more ways to help our students find a career and more economic impact on our region at georgia southern university discover more connect more be more florida and south carolina residents get in-state tuition at our armstrong and liberty campuses And we welcome you back into the Club Car of Hilton Head pregame show, joined by Hilton Head Christian Academy coach Mac Taminen. Coach, you're on a little bit of a roll right now. Last time we were together is when we were watching you play Hilton Head prep. Obviously a bigger experienced team. Things didn't go the way you wanted that night. But three of the last four games, things have. Yeah, you know, we're, uh, we're starting to pl play well. Um, and this is the time of season you want to do that. Uh, we've been fighting injuries all season. We have sickness going on. Um, suiting up seven guys tonight, but we're going to battle. We're going to come out and battle. Practices, obviously, it's hard a lot of times for teams to get motivated when they're not doing the things they want to do and they keep chucking up things in the lost column. How are you keeping them motivated? Well, you know, it's all about uh, the day. And our goal every day is not uh, looking down the road. It's not looking what happened. We're, our goal is to go 1-0 and every day. Um, and whether that be a practice or a game, we want to get that win for that day. You had some success against the team you're playing tonight last time out with the exception of the second quarter where they outscored you 25-2. to two. How do the boys feel going into tonight? They're confident. You know, uh, it's all about pace tonight. We're going to try and slow this game down. Um, like I said, the numbers favor them. Um, so we're going to do our best to slow it down and uh, try and control the tempo. Last time we talked, we had a really young starting lineup. What are we looking at tonight? Uh, tonight we're looking at a freshman, three sophomores, and a junior starting. Well, you've got to be excited about the future. I know, you know, right now it seems a little bit challenging, but, you know, the things you do well, it seemed like when you played Hilton Head Prep, the fundamentals were there. There was a lot of good ball movement. You were just outmanned. Have you seen things continue that way for the season? Absolutely. You know, it's all about getting them confidence, and uh, some teams are easier than others to gain confidence against. We got our hands full tonight with uh, JP2. You know, they're big, they're strong, they're athletic, they're deep. Uh, Coach Benedict does a great job with them, so uh, it's going to be a big test for us. I'm anxious to see how they respond. Coach, thanks so much, as always, for spending some time with us. Hey, thank you. That concludes the Club Car of Hilton Head pregame show. When we come back, we're going to have first half action right after this. Did you know that 90% of the energy created by old-fashioned light bulbs is given off in heat? You're making heat and creating more work for your air conditioner. Save 75% or more with CFL or LED light bulbs in all of your fixtures. An energy tip from Covert Air. Club Car of Hilton Head, an authorized dealer of the finest golf, utility, and transportation vehicles in the industry. We have a full selection of electric, gas, PTV, golf, and utility vehicles. We are family owned and operated and value our customer relationships. Fully staffed with factory trained technicians and can service your cart at your home or business. We provide an outstanding customer experience from sales to service. Come check us out. We are proud to be Hilton Head's only authorized club car dealer. John Paul II Catholic School is committed to preparing students for the challenges of life through intellectual, physical, and spiritual programs that advance academic excellence, leadership, service to others, while fostering discipleship according to the traditions of the Catholic faith. Our core values of service, holiness, integrity, excellence, leadership, and diversity are represented by the shield of our mascot, the Golden Warrior. Color click today to see all the great things going on at John Paul II Catholic School. High school basketball starts now. Welcome to starting five for the John Paul II Golden Warriors starting five. At guard number two, welcome Thomas Pender. At forward number three, Rashad Batista. 
Headed forward, number five, Nyleen Wright. Headed guard, number 11, Amir Chowry. And in the middle, at center, number 22, Mark Tigas. And the head coach, Stacy Benedict. Now let's meet the sturdy vibe in your Hilton Christian Eagle. The junior at guard, welcome number two, Brennan Steuben. And at guard, a sophomore, number three, Floyd Hargrove. At forward, a sophomore, number four, Robert Hall. At forward, a freshman, number 21, J.P. Laduzzi. And a guard, a sophomore, number 23, Daniel Dan Harrington. Coaches Chad Buttright, Stephen Page, Scotty Bertner, and head coach Matt Hamlin. And we welcome you in to the first half here of the Golden Eagles, or the Eagles of Christian Academy against the Golden Warriors of John Paul II. I'm Chris Tremblay, joined by Marcus Walsh, who's gonna help me out tonight. Christian Academy is in the white, they control the tip. J.P. Peduzzi pulls it down, and here comes Floyd Hargrove up court. You'll see him running the point most of the night. You should see some excellent ball movement by Christian Academy, and as soon as I say that, they throw it out of bounds and have a turnover. Mark Teagues takes it out, gives it right up to Thomas Kender, and here come the Golden Warriors. Keeping your eye on number 11, Amir Cherry. And number three, Rashid Batiste. They're gonna be the two that take control of things more than likely offensively for JP2. Taken right up and underneath. Robert Hall tried to put that one up. Nothing going there, and here comes JP2. Patiently moving the ball around, looking for somebody to get open. Looks like they want to kick it out and start things over. They swing it over to the far side. Throw it down low, that goes into Rashid Batiste. He misses, and back comes Christian Academy. A long one put up by Brennan Students, that misses. Pulled down by Nileem Wright. JP2 comes right back down court. There goes Cherry. He misses trying for a three, and we've got a lot of back and forth here, but not much too, act too much action going into the hoop. Christian Academy, for them to win tonight, this game cannot become a foot race. They have to slow things down. They have to be patient. They've got to keep John Paul II at bay. Moving it around, Hargrove takes it. Throws it over there to Daniel Harrington. Hargrove thinking about shooting, but wisely pulls it back out. And a little back and forth ball there, back over to Hargrove. Throws it down, nice pass inside to Hall. And another shot goes up, nothing happening. And we have a traveling call there. So Rashad Batiste grabs the rebound. He's called for traveling. Christian Academy will keep the ball. So we're almost two and a half minutes in, and we don't have any points yet. We do. He did, Batiste did. My bad. Rashid Batiste has three. Three nothing for John Paul II. And a long pass into Hargrove. He throws up a three ball. Off the hoop, down comes Nileem Wright with the ball. Taken away. And we have a foul call. Club car of Hilton Head, Beaufort County's only authorized club car dealer.
John Paul II trying to get Amir Cherry into the offense a little bit more. Cherry puts one up, ends up a little bit short. He hasn't warmed up yet, and here comes Christian Academy. Hargrove down the right side. Throw it around the perimeter. Looked like Brennan's students wanted to shoot it up there. Mike Rickenbaugh Chevrolet, before you buy, give us a try. There's a long one right there, and that is... That's a three-pointer there for Floyd Hargrove, and we're tied at three. Over to Cherry around the left side. Back up to Thomas Kinder up top. Cherry wants to take it, and he's gonna be called for traveling. So Amir Cherry, the freshman who leads the team in scoring, a little slow to get things going here. Georgia Southern, Florida and South Carolina residents receive in-state tuition at our campuses in Savannah and Hinesville. Visit georgiasouthern.edu slash border states. And we have a traveling call there. John Paul II will get the ball back. Throw it around right over there. Hilton Head Christian Academy zone defense is really slowing things down here and that's just what they're looking for. We have a jump ball. John Paul II will keep it. And this is just what Christian Academy needs, a game where their defense is doing the job. And there's a nice steal right there. So Robert Hall gets a steal. Here come the Eagles. Looked like Daniel Harrington wanted to shoot it. Hargrove puts up another long one. That clanks off and here comes Amir Cherry. Behind the back, gives it up nicely. And let's see what we're going to get here. JP2 will keep it. 3.39 left in the first quarter. And Amir Cherry, the leading scorer, has still been held scoreless here. Nice pass into number 15, Sam Suma, the 6'4 ninth grader, gets his first two for the night. Puts JP up, JP2 up 5-3. Floyd Hargrove double team there on the side and he wants to get rid of that thing and here comes a steal right there by Rashid Batista. And he's not able to convert and Suma's gonna be fouled and let's see if they say he's on the floor or he's gonna go to the line. Looks like they're gonna say he was on the floor. Covert Air is proud to be in their fifth year as presenting sponsor of the Covert Air High School Basketball Game of the Week. Be sure to visit them at covertair.com or give them a call at 706-5090 for all of your heating and air conditioning needs and tell them you're a fan of high school sports right here on WHHI TV. John Paul II not able to get anything out of that possession and here comes Christian Academy again until we get a steal. Amir Cherry takes it and still not able to get himself on the board. And we'll be coming back the other way. Christian Academy will keep it. So once again, just the kind of game Hilton Head Christian Academy is looking for. A low scoring affair where their defense is snuffing out the top scores for JP2. As only Rashad Batiste has been able to hit on a three pointer. Christian Academy needs to be patient. They give it back out to Hargrove. He gives it on to J.P. Paduzzi who throws it down low and there's a nice little pass there to Lucas O'Grady. And O'Grady's gonna go to the line and shoot a pair. Marcus, would you agree this is definitely the type of game that Christian Academy needs to stay in this one and possibly get a victory? 
Yeah, I, I do, Chris. Uh, Christian Academy playing really good basketball to this point. Tight game. We're seeing a lot of players for both teams get their hands on the basketball, I think, which is key. You've got to really space the floor well and certainly do a really good job of getting everybody involved. Both teams doing a really good job with that. Christian Academy's defense once again has held Amir Cherry to no points so far. There's a basket right there by O'Grady. He cuts the JP2 lead to five to four. And once again, another missed shot for John Paul II. Christian Academy is going to get their hands on the ball with a chance to take the lead. Hargrove double teamed, and we're going to have a jump ball. Christian Academy will get this one. J.P. Peduzzi throwing it into Hargrove. And Floyd Hargrove's in no hurry to get the offense set up. He's going to let them kind of get spaced out. Peduzzi back over to Hargrove, has a little trouble handling it. And I think we're going to have a foul. Number 12, Malik Frost is going to be called for that. John Paul II looking to up the tempo a bit to get their top scorers going, but more than anything to get Christian Academy running up and down the court. Christian Academy doing a good job of avoiding that, taking their time, being patient, as Marcus just mentioned, getting a lot of bodies involved, spreading the floor well. Cross court pass there. Nice attempt there by number two, Brennan Students. Comes up empty. JP2 gets it. 141 left here in the first quarter. John Paul II leads it five to four. Thomas Kender bringing it up over to Nileem Wright. Back over to Kender. Right, looking for somebody to throw it to. He finds number 22, Mark Teagues, down in there. And we're going to have a foul. So Nileem Wright looks like he's possibly going to go to the line now. Foul on J.P. Peduzzi. And we have a whistle here. It looks like Daniel Harrington got knocked on the nose. He's going to come out. <laughs> Nileem Wright has the first one clank off the left side of the rim. And he converts on the second. So JP2 goes up now six to four, 121 left in the first quarter. Number 11, Chase Blackshear just came in. He's gonna try to move it up floor a little bit. Nice pass over there to Lucas O'Grady who throws it up, doesn't hit anything. Rashid Batiste brings it on down. He, he is second on the team in rebounds this year, comes into the game with 133 total. And Christian Academy now trying to do some running and a very nice play by their Mr. Everything Brennan students. The junior puts it down on a nice play and he has a chance for a Georgia Southern three-point play. So students unable to convert. No Georgia Southern three-point play on that one, Marcus. <laughs> 50 seconds left in the first quarter. We're tied at six. Once again, the pace the Christian Academy is looking for this game to stay at.
And their zone defense is really snuffing out JP2 and everything they're trying to do. It really is, Chris. They're doing a they're doing a great job. They've got to keep up the intensity. This has been a really tight basketball game. And one thing that I found covering a lot of these games, both girls and guys, the free throw line really matters. We'll see if that continues here so far today. Oh, you couldn't have said it better. It's so important, especially near the end of the game, to get those free ones from the stripe. So far, both teams haven't done really the job they're looking for there. Little trap there on Hargrove. He's able to get it out. Students is going to launch another, and it's in and out. Good try. Nice rebound there by Lucas O'Grady as he's doing some fighting there. Wasn't able to convert, but they're hanging tough in there. O'Grady, the junior, doing a good amount of the work underneath the boards there for Christian Academy. And as we just said, Marcus, once again, you got to hit those free throws. And O'Grady misses both of them. Here comes JP2 back down the court. Amir Cherry looking to get a little bit more active in this offense. He puts one up. Not able to hit again. And after one period of play, John Paul II leads a low scoring affair, eight to six. We'll be back right after this. How old is your heating and air system? 10 years or more? Replacing an old HVAC system with a new one is 250% more efficient. Look for the Energy Star rating and let a qualified professional make sure you get the right unit for your home or business. John Paul II Catholic School is committed to preparing students for the challenges of life through intellectual, physical, and spiritual programs that advance academic excellence, leadership, service to others, while fostering discipleship according to the traditions of the Catholic faith. Our core values of service, holiness, integrity, excellence, leadership, and diversity are represented by the shield of our mascot, the Golden Warrior. Color click today to see all the great things going on at John Paul II Catholic School. Georgia Southern University, we're setting the standard for higher education in Southeast Georgia on three exciting campuses in Savannah, Statesboro, and Hinesville. We're offering more opportunities for hands-on learning, more ways to help our students find a career, and more economic impact on our region. At Georgia Southern University, discover more, connect more, be more. Florida and South Carolina residents get in-state tuition at our Armstrong and Liberty campuses. Covert Air. Honored to provide the heating and air conditioning needs for St. Gregory. Covert Air. Covert Air. For all your heating and air conditioning, no one can compare. And we're ready to go here with the second quarter. John Paul II leads it eight to six here from the Eagle's Nest, home of Hilton Head Christian Academy. Nyleem Wright trying to get Amir Cherry and Rashad Batiste a little more involved in the offense. Batiste throws it up. He was a little too far under the hoop, and here come the Eagles. Floyd Hargrove bringing it down court. Throws it on over to J.P. Peduzzi, who throws it into Brennan Students, who gets his own rebound. Decides to reset things. Hargrove once again at the point. He'll be the quarterback for the most of the night. J.P. Peduzzi now with it. Sure, 
And what's the golden rule? You never pick up your dribble until you're sure what you want to do with it. And J.P. Peduzzi almost got himself in trouble there by picking, by doing just that. Lucas O'Grady takes it in, tries to make something happen, comes up empty, and here comes J.P. too. Amir Cherry from the corner for a three-pointer, still empty. Cherry comes in averaging 18.3 points a game, hasn't been able to put anything up yet. And we have a foul, so Brennan Students will go to the line for two. Amir Cherry picks up his first foul. Students converts on the first one. And he makes them both, so we're tied up at eight. Here comes Rashad Batiste, right over to Thomas Kender, over to Cherry on the left side. And Cherry still can't get one to fall. And there's Rashad Batiste to go ahead and convert. He picked up another rebound, as I said before, he comes in here with 133 rebounds for the season. Trailing only Amir Cherry for the team lead. Cherry has 138. Floyd Hargrove back out at the top of the key. Throws a pass and out of bounds. So a turnover there by Christian Academy. John Paul II will get it back. And this is what Christian Academy has to be careful of, Marcus. They've got to play slow ball. They can't make mistakes. And turnovers are mistakes. We saw in the girls' game a lot of turnovers on both sides. Whoever has the fewest amount of turnovers has a really good chance of winning this game. Coming in a, a one-game losing streak for, uh, for JP2, HHCA on a two-game winning streak. Something's got to give here, Chris. This should be a great one. So far, that's exactly what we have, Marcus. Club car of Hilton Head, Beaufort County's only authorized club car dealer. Amir Cherry still can't get one to fall. And he's gonna keep trying to do it. Let's see. And finally, Amir Cherry gets on the board. And we're going to have a timeout. And it's a perfect time to mention that our title sponsor, Covert Air, is proud to be in their fifth year as presenting sponsor of the Covert Air High School Basketball Game of the Week. Be sure to visit them at covertair.com or give them a call at 706-5090. That's 706-5090 for all of your heating and air conditioning needs and tell them you are a fan of high school sports right here on WHHI TV. Marcus, it's getting to be playoff time. Obviously for Christian Academy, that's not gonna happen this year. For John Paul II, they have to have a win tonight to keep their hopes alive. You think that's weighing on them a little bit? You know, it very well could be. John Paul II, still a pretty young basketball team. Uh, I was mentioning, you know, the different sports that they have at JP2 are all in different uh, areas of, of play. Um, you know, it certainly could be, but this would be a huge win for them here tonight in a pretty hostile environment here at the Eagles Nest. We'll see what they can continue to do here in the first half. And Marcus said it perfectly, the Christian Academy fans have the stands filled and they are rooting hard for their Eagles. Brennan Students at the top of the key over to Floyd Hargrove. Back to Students. Oh, and that's one you don't want to try. Once again, you can't have those turnovers and those cross-court passes usually make it happen. The long reach of Amir Cherry got his hand on the ball and John Paul II gets it back. They throw it down low, throw it into a cutting Sam Suma, the 6'4 freshman can't convert. And back comes Christian Academy. Chief John Paul II leads it 12 to eight. Have a chance to increase that here. Forward pass over to Cherry. Cherry still isn't warmed up. Christian Academy needs to slow it down. 
No more cross-court passes. Look for the open man, look for the open jumper, see if they can work it inside, draw some fouls, potentially get John Paul II into foul trouble, take advantage of the bonus situation, get to the foul line, hit some foul shots. Brennan students over to J.P. Peduzzi, over to Jace Blackshear, throws it into Hargrove, who's gonna take a long one, and he comes up with nothing but air. But once again, Mr. Everything under the hoop, Lucas O'Grady converts, and he pulls Christian Academy two points closer. So O'Grady doing a fine job rebounding for Christian Academy, gets an offensive rebound and converts. And there's a turnover for John Paul II. Mike Rickenbosch Chevrolet, before you buy, give us a try. And don't forget to stick around for the Mike Rickenbosch Chevrolet halftime show. 12 to 10, 337 left in the second quarter. Hilton Head Christian Academy keeping this one close. Floyd Hargrove taking it down and we have a foul there on the floor, non-shot foul. That's gonna be on Brad Tegas. That's his second. J.P. Peduzzi looking to throw it in, gets it into Brennan Students. Back to Peduzzi, he's gonna try a three ball. Nice rebound underneath, not able to convert. That's Daniel Harrington, he's gonna to go to the line. Georgia Southern, Florida and South Carolina residents receive in-state tuition at our campuses in Savannah and Hinesville. Visit georgiasouthern.edu slash border states and check that out. Once again, Georgia Southern University. <laughs> Trying to convert on the second one now. Once again, the foul shot's not making him, that's just killer. So one out of two there. Long three-pointer by Nyleem Wright. That's a Georgia Southern three-pointer. Three minutes now left. Ooh, Nyleem Wright almost has his hands on that. Three minutes left in the second quarter. Hilton Head Christian Academy needs to be patient. Working it around, almost a turnover there. Brennan Stude is gonna fire up a three ball. He misses, oh, almost got his own rebound, but he kicked it out to Floyd Hargrove, who's gonna try from three-point land, and Hargrove converts. So a Georgia Southern three-pointer for Hargrove, and that pulls the Eagles within one. Oop, there's almost a turnover right there. Nyleem Wright's gonna try for three. He misses. Christian Academy comes down with it. J.P. Peduzzi on the rebound. Floyd Hargrove picks it up. He needs some help there. Oh, and he, he and we're gonna have a jump ball. John Paul II, is it their possession? No, it looks like Christian Academy is going to keep it. Floyd Hargrove throws it over there to Jace Blackshear. Once again, those cross-court passes, Marcus, they've got to be careful of turnovers. They, they do, Chris. I'm really surprised how low scoring this basketball game is. You were talking about the fact that the mistakes have to be minimized. So far, you know, both teams doing a, a nice job of trying to stay away from fouling but you just wonder if there's gonna be any offense. The one thing that has happened is the rim has said no to several shots, just pure rejection. You'd almost think there was a cover on it. There's a long three-pointer, there's no cover on it that time. Three-pointer for Daniel Harrington. Nice move there by number 10, TJ Polite Grant, but he's not able to convert. 
Rashid Batiste tried to convert on the rebound and he comes up empty too. Christian Academy with a two point lead and they have the ball with 1.10 left in the second quarter. And just as soon, oh, nice save there. But Amir Cherry picks it up and he converts. So Cherry picks up his second basket of the game. Tied at 17 here, under a minute to go in the second quarter, just what Christian Academy ordered. But as Marcus just mentioned, it seems like there's been a cover on the hoop, certainly for John Paul II as Amir Cherry, their leading scorer who comes in with an average of 18.3 points a game, only has four so far. Nice fade away by Robert Hall who puts Christian Academy back up by two. 30 seconds now left in the second quarter. Oh, uh, we're gonna have a travel there. You bet. Number 12, Malik Frost got a little greedy and he got picked up for traveling and that's another turnover and Hilton Head Christian Academy will get it back with 20 seconds left. They lead 19 to 17. And what happened the last time they played, John Paul II outscored them 25 to two in the second quarter. That's not happening here tonight. And that's why they're still in this one. J.P. Peduzzi's gonna put up a long one. He comes up empty. Amir Cherry tries to get something happening here and that doesn't show up. So as we go to halftime, we have Hilton Head Christian Academy up 19, 19 to 17. Stick around for the Mike Rickenbaugh halftime show, which we'll have right after these messages. Preventative maintenance, emergencies, new units. We are Covert Air, serving Bluffton 24-7. For all your heating and air conditioning, no one can compare. Club Car of Hilton Head, an authorized dealer of the finest golf, utility, and transportation vehicles in the industry. We have a full selection of electric, gas, PTV, golf, and utility vehicles. We are family owned and operated and value our customer relationships. Fully staffed with factory trained technicians and can service your cart at your home or business. We provide an outstanding customer experience from sales to service. Come check us out. We are proud to be Hilton Head's only authorized club car dealer. Hilton Head PSD offers convenient and secure online billing. Just have your PSD bill handy and click on the online bill payment button at hhpsd.com. You'll be guided through the steps to establish your online billing account. Their payment options allow you to set up recurring credit card payments, you can view your consumption history, and more. Remember to have your PSD bill handy when you visit hhpsd.com to get started. Hilton Head PSD, we're always working for you. At Georgia Southern University, we're setting the standard for higher education in Southeast Georgia on three exciting campuses in Savannah, Statesboro, and Hinesville. We're offering more opportunities for hands-on learning, more ways to help our students find a career, and more economic impact on our region. At Georgia Southern University, discover more, connect more, be more. Florida and South Carolina residents get in-state tuition at our Armstrong and Liberty campuses. And we welcome you into the Mike Rickenbaugh Chevrolet Halftime Show. I'm Chris Tremblay, and we have a game that Christian Academy was looking to go ahead and have for this evening in terms of the speed of play. Christian Academy leads John Paul II 19 to 17, handling the ball well, maybe a few more turnovers than they've wanted, maybe a few more missed foul shots than they've wanted, but they've kept the score low. Earlier this month, or on January 12th, when these two teams met earlier, John Paul II won 67 of 41 on the strength of a 25 to two second quarter. That didn't happen tonight. The main reason John Paul II isn't scoring is their two big men, Amir Cherry and Rashad Batiste. They're held to four points and five points respectively. They come in, Cherry does, averaging 18.3. 
Batiste 17.6. For Christian Academy, Floyd Hargrove leads things with two three-pointers. He has six points. Brennan Students and Daniel Harrington both have four. Once again for Christian Academy to stay in this one, and they're looking for the upset because John Paul II needs to win this one to keep their playoff hopes alive. They need to control the ball. They need to keep it a low-scoring affair. So far, they've done the job. Joining me here today in the Mike Rickenbaugh Chevrolet Halftime Show is an old friend and the Christian Academy Athletic Director and the ladies basketball coach here, Kenny Conroy. Kenny, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Talk to us first of all about your dual role. Obviously, you had the girls game a little bit earlier. You were working the sidelines pretty hard. If we kind of brought the heart rate down a little bit, it was a nice victory tonight. Yeah, it was a nice victory. The girls worked very hard. Um, you know, we're out we're without Jasmine Campbell for the rest of the year with a torn ACL, and, and these girls are going to have to step up and replace 16 points and 10 rebounds a game, and they did a good job tonight doing that, uh, controlling the ball down the end, making some key shots, and not panicking. I was going to say at the end, they really they did. They controlled it pretty well, made sure it didn't turn over, and a couple good on loose balls, a couple good quick timeouts to keep the ball. Yeah, well, we had to do that. I, I, I told them after the last one I didn't have any more left, so they were on their own, so uh, I guess they basically stayed on their feet for a while. Let's talk about your role here as athletic director. Talk about, first of all, let's talk about the winter sports, how things are going here at Christian Academy and what we have going on. Yeah, well, things are going well right now. You know, it's basketball, basketball, basketball. Um, you know, our girls team now 17-1, and 10-0 in the region play. Uh, should get a number one seed for the state tournament. I was about to say, you're going to have an extended season. Yes, we will have an extended season. That was an extra couple of weeks uh, at the end of February. But uh, but the boys have been playing hard. They've got a couple with uh, three good region wins in a row. And again, they're playing well tonight. So, uh, so things are going well. They'll probably fall short of making the playoffs but a great accomplishment for coach Tamman and uh, what he's done with these boys this year well especially because the team's so young you know you've got two juniors three sophomores four freshmen and an eighth grader on the starting roster you know more or less against the more experienced teams how do you compete yeah well you know you got to live with the mistakes you know and you got to live with the stage you got to keep telling the kids they have to work hard believe in themselves believe in the coaches and and good things will happen Let's talk about what's going to go on at Christian Academy in the springtime as far as sports go. Now, springtime is the busiest time of the year. Of course, we have, a, we have one field, which is a co-op for baseball and soccer. So something's always going on here on the, on the campus. Um, our, our boys' varsity soccer team is looking to repeat as state champions. Our boys' baseball team is going to be very good this year, and it's going to make a run for the state tournament. Um, girls' soccer is going to play well. We've got our golf team, which is always very, very strong. Our boys' tennis team. Clay Target shooting, shooting stuff up in the air. So uh, so it's busy as could be here in uh, Hilton Head Christian Academy. Well, you and I know a little bit about golf, so it's always nice to see those golfers get out there and win a state title, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, back, back when we were a little younger, we could go out there and compete with them now. Now they hit it 320 yards and we don't, so it's a, it's a little different world, but it's it's great to watch the kids play. Uh, Danny Azillion leading the team, uh, junior committed to Virginia Tech already, so he's got some game, and uh, there's a bunch of other younger ones who have some game too, so uh, I try to stay away from playing with them so I don't embarrass myself anymore. We're allowed to move up to whatever tees yeah. we want at our yeah. age now. That's a good part. Tee it up forward, Jack Nicholas said. <laughs> you bet. Kenny Conroy, athletic director and ladies basketball coach here at Hilton Head Christian Academy. Thanks so much for joining us. Okay, great to see you, Chris. You're a good friend, buddy. Enjoyed it. That concludes the Mike Rickenbaugh Chevrolet Halftime Show. When we come back, we'll have second half action right after this. Serving the residents of Sun City 24-7 for your heating and air conditioning needs. Complete customer satisfaction is not only our goal, it's our business. No one can compare. At Georgia Southern University, we're setting the standard for higher education in Southeast Georgia on three exciting campuses in Savannah, Statesboro, and Hinesville. We're offering more opportunities for hands-on learning, more ways to help our students find a career, and more economic impact on our region. At Georgia Southern University, discover more, connect more, be more. Florida and South Carolina residents get in-state tuition at our Armstrong and Liberty campuses. Club Car of Hilton Head, an authorized dealer of the finest golf, utility, and transportation vehicles in the industry. We have a full selection of electric, gas, PTV, golf, and utility vehicles. We are family-owned and operated and value our customer relationships. 
fully staffed with factory trained technicians and can service your cart at your home or business. We provide an outstanding customer experience from sales to service. Come check us out. We are proud to be Hilton Head's only authorized club car dealer. Watching the Coburn Air High School Basketball Series right here on WHHI Sports. And the second half is underway here. Hilton Head Christian Academy leads it 19 to 17. They're looking for the upset tonight here over John Paul II, who needs a win to keep their postseason hopes alive. Amir Cherry and Rashad Batiste, the two scoring stars, have been held in check. And just as soon as I say that, Amir Cherry pops in another two, and he ties this one up. Cherry comes in averaging 18.3 points a game. He's pulled down 138 rebounds for the year. And for Coach Stacy Benedict, he's got to like the fact that he's only a freshman. Yummy. Floyd Hargrove, once again, he'll be out at the point for Christian Academy, trying to rotate the ball. Christian Academy at the end of the first half started to throw maybe a few more cross-court passes than they wanted and they paid for it a couple times, but they stayed in this one nicely. Head coach Mac Taminen wanting his team to be patient, knowing that the pace can't get too quick for them to stay in this one. Daniel Harrington, Trying to control it over to Brennan Students, who takes it back up top. Hargrove looks for a cutting Harrington. Nice pass there, he's not able to convert, but he's gonna go to the line. So Daniel Harrington here will get two from the stripe, and they really need to convert on these, Marcus. You know, Kevin Libby and I were talking about it at the May River Bluffton game a couple of weeks back. The guys came in particularly because we, we worked that game together. And he said, you know, the most efficient shot that you see on the basketball floor is from the free throw line. And we talk about it all the time covering sports, especially basketball. It's, it's a mental thing. As long as you've got your mind right, you can sink free throws. It's when it goes askew that there becomes issues. And Harrington's able to convert on both of those. John Paul the second with the ball, Cherry up top. Gives it off to Thomas Kender, who's gonna try to set something up here. Nileem right on the left side, throws a cross-court pass, and that never works out well for anybody. And Hargrove goes in for an easy two. So Floyd Hargrove gives them a four-point lead. Immediately, John Paul II comes down and tries a big one. Here goes Christian Academy again. Hargrove takes it, and it looked like he might have taken a step or two. Tried to lay it up, and Amir Cherry said, I don't think so. So with six minutes left here in the third quarter, Hilton Head Christian Academy leads this one by four. Floyd Hargrove once again is going to be taking it up top. And another turnover for Christian Academy. Over to Cherry who's going to take it. He gets fouled, not able to convert, but he's going to go to the line. Cherry has six so far tonight, looking to add to that total. And misses the first one on the left side. Free throws, free throws, free throws. So important. 
And Jerry misses both of them. Sam Suma gets it, and the big 6'4 freshman converts. Well, and there's going to be a quick turnover there. Brennan Students tried to take off with the ball before he had it, unless. No, it was not touched by John Paul II. They'll get the ball. Now we're starting to see more turnovers than McDonald serves in the night. Christian Academy definitely doesn't want to do that. Brennan Students from three-point land. He clanks it off the front of the rim. Here comes Rashid Batiste. He's going to put it on up off the side of the rim. And boy, Marcus, I think there's still a cover on that basket. I think there is. I, I don't know what the issue is, but the iron is just full rejection. I mean, it, it's saying that ball's not going to go through. The strings are not having any involvement. It's, it's like Carlos Santana put his guitar down in his case. I mean, it's just not going in. Well put, I love that. Thomas Kender with the foul. Christian Academy will take it on underneath. Throw it up top to Daniel Harrington. Hargrove's gonna take it from three-point land. He tries for a Georgia Southern three-pointer. Nothing doing there. Amir Cherry with a quick pass to the big South freshman Suma who gets fouled and he'll go to the foul line now. Maybe we'll get to see somebody make a foul shot. Suma who plays quarterback during football season. And you gotta love a six foot four inch freshman who plays on the basketball team is also a quarterback. And Suma converts on the first one. There is a basket there. And he misses the second one. Batiste takes the rebound. Suma kicks it on out there to Malik Frost. Gives it to Kender, who's going to reset. Back over to Frost. Cherry takes it. It'll pass into Batiste who tries a nice left hand underneath scoop shot and he converts. So Rashad Batiste with a nice move there. Puts John Paul II up by one, 24-23, 4-15 left in the third quarter. They throw it down underneath to Lucas O'Grady who draws the foul on Suma and he'll go to the foul line. So O'Grady, the junior, doing a fine job underneath tonight. He's keeping Christian Academy in this one. Makes the first one. Mike Rickenbaugh Chevrolet, before you buy, give us a try. O'Grady looking to convert on both of them. And he does so, so Lucas O'Grady. I think that might be the first time tonight you've seen somebody make both of them. Club Car of Hilton Head, Buford County's only authorized club car dealer. If you're looking for your own personal golf cart, check out Club Car of Hilton Head. Amir Cherry drains one now and he's starting to warm up. John Paul leads it 26-25. Christian Academy will keep it. J.P. Peduzzi taking it out. Pass there to Brennan Students, who's gonna waste no time putting up a three ball. He comes up short. John Paul II will get it back. Malik Frost now bringing it up, right over to Cherry. And Cherry forgot to put the ball down soon enough and he gets called for traveling, and that's another turnover. 
Georgia Southern University, Florida and South Carolina residents receive in-state tuition at our campuses in Savannah and Hinesville. Visit georgiasouthern.edu slash border states. That's Georgia Southern University. Long try there that goes off the rim, hits the top of the backboard, and John Paul II will get it back. They lead it 26 to 25 in a low scoring affair here. 317 left in the third quarter. Hilton Head Christian Academy doing a terrific job of staying in this one. Jerry thinking about shooting it. Wisely pulls it back out. Frost tries to penetrate, nothing going there. Cross court pass to Cherry. Trying to make something along the baseline and we're gonna have a blocking foul on Daniel Harrington. Covert Air is proud to be in their fifth year as presenting sponsor of the Covert Air High School Basketball Game of the Week. Be sure to visit them at covertair.com or give them a call at 706-5090. That's 706-5090 for all of your heating and air conditioning needs and tell them you are a fan of high school sports here on WHHI TV. Sam Suma fouled down low. He makes it and he has a chance to convert a Georgia Southern three-pointer. So Suma, the six foot four inch freshman, goes to the line now. Trying to up John Paul II's lead by four. And he does so. In for John Paul II comes TJ Polite Grant. Floyd Hargrove bringing it up over to Jace Blackshear. Hargrove double team. Some good defense there. We're gonna have an over and back call and John Paul II on the speed. It's a good defense there. They're gonna get the ball back and a chance to increase their lead. And this is where Christian Academy has to be careful, Marcus. They can't let JP2 pull away. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely right, Chris. And I tell you what JP2 is doing really well on defense. They have been relentless, controlling the spacing of the floor, and they've just really been sticking to HHCA like glue. As that's a three that goes. Nothing but the strings on that, baby. Amir Cherry starting to warm up now. He now has 11. Nice pass right there, caught, not able to convert. Once again, there's Lucas O'Grady for Christian Academy, trying to keep them close. Just about two minutes left here now in the third quarter. Then we have a little stop in action here. John Paul II leads it 32-27. Rashid Batiste out top. That's not where he wants to be, though. He wants to be down low. Over to Cherry, who's now over on the right side. Back up to Kender. Kender's going to pop a three ball. He misses it. O'Grady once again comes down with another rebound. Fine effort there by Lucas O'Grady this evening. Jace Blackshear over to J.P. Paduzzi. Back up top to Floyd Hargrove. Hargrove takes it to the hoop, tries to make something happen, throws it inside, it ends up being a turnover. Here comes Batiste, he throws it underneath to Nileem Wright who goes up and he's gonna be fouled and he's gonna go to the line. Wright misses the first one. Free throws not being either team's strength tonight. And certainly when it comes to the postseason, Marcus, you gotta make them. 
Oh, that's that's absolutely right. I mean, you and I have been watching all of these missed free throws, just a little bit more focus and concentration. I think even if you take just an extra second or two before putting the shot up, you know, that may help. It's it's very similar. I, I tell people all the time, it's very similar in, in the sport that you know best, golf. If you just take a second or two before making an approach shot or making a putt, taking a putt, you know, you have a chance to hit it. Patience. Perfectly put. Getting that much more focus can certainly make all the difference. Christian Academy is going to take a timeout. They now trail by eight. John Paul II starting to pull away. Amir Cherry had a steal a little while ago. That now takes him up to 13 points, and he's starting to get warm. Right now we look at Christian Academy, a team that comes in at five and 11. Once again, as we've mentioned countless times, a very young team, but now they're starting to make the mistakes, Marcus, you can't make, you know, even for a young team, too many cross court passes, too many missed free throws. And against a team like John Paul II, that's not gonna cut it. No, it's not. This John Paul II team has been getting better and better as this game has gone on. Um, especially on the defensive side, like I just mentioned. They're really gonna have to take some time, will the Eagles, and just get, the, get themselves back into this game. Right now they're down eight, there's still plenty of time left in the game with 10 seconds to go, but they need to just buck some trends and uh, play a little bit harder, especially on that defensive side. 57 seconds left here in the third quarter. Christian Academy trails it by eight. Lucas O'Grady throws it in. Floyd Hargrove looking to get them back into a groove here. They certainly could use a hoop this time down. And it looked like there was a lot of ball there, but we're gonna have a foul called. Christian Academy will take it out on the side. And it appears as though John Paul II is up their defensive intensity too. They've really been all over the ball this quarter. Hargrove taking it. He's gonna take a long three and he converts Floyd Hargrove with a Georgia Southern three-pointer. His third of the night, that gives him 11 points on the evening. Nyleem Wright trying to answer, banks off the inside of the rim. Rod Down and Christian Academy doing everything they can to stay in this one. They trail it 35 to 30 with just under 20 seconds left in the third quarter. There's a wide open man underneath and somehow Robert Hall got open and he was able to convert. And there's a turnover. Nope, they say it went off somebody with Christian Academy. John Paul II will keep it with 8.1 seconds left here in the third quarter. Throws it out, Kender up top. Throws it over to Suma, who's gonna take it. Christian Academy will get the ball back. Looked like Suma might have stepped out of bounds and hadn't reestablished himself back in before he got the ball. So with 2.2 seconds left, Christian Academy is going to see if they can make a little something happen here. They've done a good job of crawling back into this when they were down by eight. Now it's 35-32. And oh, Floyd Hargrove tried to cut that, or tried to tie the game up with that shot. As we go into the fourth quarter, John Paul II leads at 35 to 32. We'll be back right after this. Bigger is not always better. A big HVAC system may get you to the desired temperature quicker, but the end result is wildly fluctuating temps and a loss of efficiency. And that translates to a loss of money. When it comes to HVAC, size really does matter. At Georgia Southern University, we're setting the standard for higher education in Southeast Georgia on three exciting campuses in Savannah, Statesboro, and Hinesville. We're offering more opportunities for hands-on learning, more ways to help our students find a career, and more economic impact on our region. At Georgia Southern University, discover more, connect more, be more. Florida and South Carolina residents get in-state tuition at our Armstrong and Liberty campuses. 
Hilton Head PSD offers convenient and secure online billing. Just have your PSD bill handy and click on the online bill payment button at hhpsd.com. You'll be guided through the steps to establish your online billing account. Their payment options allow you to set up recurring credit card payments, you can view your consumption history, and more. Remember to have your PSD bill handy when you visit hhpsd.com to get started. Hilton Head PSD, we're always working for you. Station 300, staying cool in the summer and warm in the winter through the services of Covert Air. For all your heating and air conditioning, no one can compare. And we're ready to start the fourth quarter here at the Eagle's Nest. Chris Hilton Head Christian Academy. Trails John Paul II, 35 to 32. They've done a great job of staying in this one. Floyd Hargrove, the quarterback, so to speak, out there. He'll be running the point here in the fourth quarter also. Daniel Harrington trying to make a little something, throwing into Lucas O'Grady. Hargrove's gonna try for another three. That one slipped off the side of his hand. John Paul II will get the ball back. Nyleem right on the left side, back out to Kinder, over to right. They're trying to work it down into Batiste. Cherry won't be shy in putting it up. Nothing doing there, Nyleem Wright comes up with the rebound. His ball kind of clanks off the rim there, and here comes Christian Academy. Daniel Harrington trying to move it down. Brennan Student's trying to take it. Nice defensive play there by number 22, Mark Tegas. Christian Academy will keep it. Harrington throws it into Hargrove. He's gonna reset things up top. Daniel Harrington gets it back over to Hargrove. He was thinking about shooting it. Over to Brennan Students on the left side. Hargrove over to Harrington. Down low to Jace Blackshear, and there's a turnover to Amir Cherry. And Amir Cherry's gonna take it right to the hoop, and he's going to score. And that's what Christian Academy can't do. They can't have those turnovers, especially now that they trail by five. Fortunately for them, Mr. Lucas O'Grady came to play, and he has another basket, and he's keeping them right in this one. Nyleem right down low, and now the power of Batiste is starting to take over. He gets another one, and that's really all they need to do right now is just throw it underneath the Batiste, because it's almost a gimme for him even with the size advantage he has. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it started with that three-pointer that he had to open the ball game. Batiste just had a great night shooting the rock. He's, he's gonna be the key factor here in the next 6.04 to finish off this game, Chris. He's been outstanding all night long. Between him at 6.2 and Freshman Sam Suma at 6'4, they have a decided height advantage over Christian Academy down low. But Christian Academy's done a good job of sloughing down and trying to keep the ball out of his hands. Amir Cherry wants to shoot it again, gives it back to Kender. Nyleem Wright's gonna drive. Let's see what we have here. Daniel Harrington, it looks like, is gonna be called for a blocking foul. <laughs> John Paul will take it, Nyleem Wright gets the ball, throws it underneath to Suma, Suma goes, looks to make it, doesn't quite convert, gets the ball back, doesn't get it to fall again. And the ball's out of bounds, John Paul will keep it. 542 left in this one, John Paul leads 39 to 34. I'm Chris Tremblay along with Marcus Walsh. We've enjoyed bringing you this game tonight, it's been a nice close one. Suma decides he's gonna try for a three-pointer. And he comes up with nothing but nothing. Hargrove decides to bring it back up top and reset things. Brennan Students over the right side to Harrington. 
There's almost another turnover. Amir Cherry does get his hands on it. John Paul II gets it. They call a quick timeout and they'll keep the ball. So another turnover by Christian Academy. The one thing that they couldn't do, and those turnovers have made it so their deficit's starting to grow. There's Coach Stacy Benedict. As we mentioned at the top of the show, more than likely with the John Paul II victory tonight, they will be heading to the postseason. They come in win winning seven of their last 10. They're seven and three in the region, and Christian Academy done a fine job in their last four games. They've won three out of their last four, and you can actually see their improved play from their um, game earlier this season on WHHI TV when they played Hilton Head Prep, who is definitely the power double A team in the region, as they're 19 and one at this point. Nyleem Wright tries to take it up the left side, nothing doing there. Good defense by Daniel Harrington. Throw it into Batiste, who bobbles the ball. He gets it back. Looks like he goes up to shoot, and we have a foul. And let's see what we call there. And he's going to go to the line, so he'll be shooting two. And once again, a Klankarooski off the rim on the foul shot. Batiste with his second. Not able to convert either one of those. Free throws hurting both teams tonight. Hargrove takes it right to the hoop. Nice play by him, but he's not able to convert. And it looks like he was fouled and he's going to go to the foul line. Marcus, you think these coaches are gonna have the boys working on foul shots tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's, it's really been interesting to see what, what they've done at the free throw line or the lack thereof. You, you see a, a make right there. Um, that's, that's definitely something that, that they're gonna have to work on as we get later on into this season. And I was talking about it with the girls game, you know, a, a key certainly for, uh, for JP2, even though they got beat, was to go to the free throw line. Coach Floyd was saying, we have to make our free throws. They were able to get to the line and they made their free throws to keep it a close game. Something we really just have not seen much in this one. However, we just saw Floyd Hargrove convert on two. That was kind of nice to see. Christian Academy comes up with the steal. They trail by three. Just about four and a half minutes left in this one. Yes, they have plenty of time. They just need to remain patient. Amir Cherry, I would say he's heating up offensively, but more than anything, he's heating up defensively. Hargrove tries to try tie it up with a long three, comes up empty. Here comes Malik Frost down court. He comes up empty and now it goes back and here comes Daniel Harrington. Harrington's gonna take it and put it up and he puts it in and he pulls Hilton at Christian Academy within one point at 39-38 with four minutes left. Hilton Head Christian Academy will not go away. Malik Frost trying to get a repatriation, gives it to their player, Amir Cherry, who bangs it off, but he gets his own rebound, puts it up and in. So Amir Cherry follows up his own miss with a basket. That gives him for the evening now 17 points. He's almost at his season average, and he's heating up here in the second half. He's got 13. Timeout is called. That's a good time for us to bring up our friends once again at Covert Air. Is proud to be in their fifth year as presenting sponsor of the Covert Air High School Basketball Game of the Week. Be sure to visit them at covertair.com or give them a call at 706-5090. That's 706-5090 for all of your heating and air conditioning needs and tell them you are a fan of high school sports right here on WHHI TV. I'm a fan of high school sports. How about you, Marcus? Absolutely, high school sports are great, and especially boys basketball. I remember being in high school not too terribly long ago, but you know, everybody would come into the gym 
and see the varsity play. We had great crowds there at uh, Massillon Perry High School in Massillon, Ohio. Shout out to the Panthers. It's, it's great to be back in this environment again, seeing great fans appreciating their team's hard work both on and off the floor, away from the games at practice in the locker room, or in the weight room, and even in the locker room, you know, all the camaraderie. It's, uh, it's great being back in this atmosphere. Well, this gym is electric tonight, and the hometown fans are trying to get their Hilton Head Christian Academy Eagles to come up with an upset victory, and they're doing everything they can to hang in there. They currently trail 41 to 38, but they have the ball with a chance to tie. Floyd Hargrove up top. Mike Rickenbaugh Chevrolet, before you buy, give us a try. That's Mike Rickenbaugh Chevrolet. Brennan Students with the ball now. Throws it over to Harrington, who has a nice pass into J.P. Paduzzi, who's not quite able to convert. Lucas O'Grady and Nyleem Wright got their hand on it. They say Wright was the last one to touch it, so Christian Academy will keep it. J.P. Paduzzi will throw it up. Brennan Students is going to try to tie it, and he almost does. Amir Cherry brings down the rebound. He throws it over to Nyleem Wright, who puts it up. He comes up with nothing but air. Cherry keeps the ball. And as much as Cherry is heated up here in the second half, his offensive rebounding as well as his stealing, or I'm sorry, Batiste, that's really what's gone ahead and started to separate things here. So John Paul II trying to slow things down a little bit. Run a little time off this clock. And we're going to have an over and back, and Christian Academy will get it. And in for John Paul II comes number 15, Sam Suma. <clears throat> so Stacy Benedict, the coach of John Paul II, is opting to get a little bit bigger lineup in there. Club car of Hilton Head, Beaufort County's only authorized club car dealer. If you're looking to get yourself a golf cart, go check out Club Car of Hilton Head. Floyd Hargrove once again running the point up top. Brennan Students throws it down low to Daniel Harrington. Throws it inside over to Hargrove, and he's going to throw up a three ball, and he nails another! Floyd Hargrove with his fourth Georgia Southern three-pointer of the night, and we're tied with two minutes left at 41. Amir Cherry was thinking about throwing it, and now we have, let's see what we're gonna get for a call here. I'm not good at reading hand signals, so I'm not sure what that was, but either way, it looks like Sam Suma's going to the foul line. Suma, 153 left, game is tied. Suma misses the first one. Floyd Hargrove with 16 points for Christian Academy after that last three-pointer. Lucas O'Grady gets his big body in there, and Christian Academy has a chance to take the lead here. J.P. Peduzzi slowing things out. Coach Mac Tamanen wants them to take their time. No reason to rush here. Into Lucas O'Grady, who had it and lost it, but O'Grady regathers it, and he gives the Eagles of Christian Academy the lead here in their upset bid over John Paul II. Over to Suma, who throws it out to Cherry, who misses, and Floyd Hargrove gets his hand on it. Here comes Daniel Harrington, who throws it ahead to Brennan Students, who has a loop-to-loop -loop layup, and he puts Christian Academy up by four. Lucas O'Grady knocks it out of bounds, and now this Christian Academy crowd is really getting into it. 111 left. John Paul II trails by four, and Eileen Wright with a long three-pointer to go ahead and cut it to one. So just when they needed it, Eileen Wright comes up big for John Paul II. We're under a minute here. Coach Mac Tamanen of Christian Academy wants to go ahead and talk this one over, and Marcus, we couldn't have asked for a better finish. This, this has been a great finish, and just a second ago, this place stopped rocking. I mean, th this place was as loud, I think, as any uh, high school venue that we've been to this year. Some keys 
right now in this 45-44 game. For me, it's very, very, very important to obviously hit your free throws. If, if either team gets to the line, and chances are they will here with uh, about a minute left. And then the spacing on the floor is very important as well. Just playing really tight defense on both sides. This should be one heck of a finish, Chris. I couldn't agree more. Georgia Southern University, Florida and South Carolina residents, don't forget, you receive in-state tuition at our campuses in Savannah and Hinesville. Visit georgiasouthern.edu slash border, border states. That's once again, georgiasouthern.edu slash border states and check out Georgia Southern University. So they're reworking the clock here. Let's see how much time they're going to put back on it. They're going to tell us there's 55.5 seconds left in this one. Hilton Head Christian Academy leads it by one, and they have the ball. Floyd Hargrove takes it, throws it underneath pass. Oh, a give and go to J.P. Paduzzi. He's not able to convert. John Paul II gets it back. Nileem right on the left side. Over to Amir Cherry. Cherry takes it. He's going to drive. He's going to lay it up, and he comes up empty. Batiste gets the rebound. His size advantage comes into play, but he doesn't convert, and here comes Floyd Hargrove. Floyd Hargrove now wants to take some time off the clock. We're under 30 seconds. And now it's gonna become foul shooting time. Both teams in the bonus. And now, Marcus, it becomes very important to make that first one. Yeah, absolutely. I believe we're in the one and one situation where obviously if you don't make the first, you don't get the second. So it's really important that you just take your time, sink this first free throw, and, uh, and then you get the reward of the second one. Oh, J.P. Paduzzi, after a little run around the rim there, he increases Christian's Academy's lead by one more, they lead by two now. Misses the second one. John Paul II gets it back. 20 seconds left. Coach Stacy Benedict wants a timeout to talk about this one here. So once again, we said at the top of the show, if it's a low scoring affair, Christian Academy can stay in this one and that's just what happened. It's 46 to 44, just about 20 seconds left. And Stacy Benedict, he, this is the last thing he wants to see is his team come away with a loss here. Team comes away with a loss out of this one. They're probably taking themselves out of playoff contention. Christian Academy, you can bet their defense will be on the high intensity level here. And what a win this would be for them, Marcus. Absolutely, you know, their season, you know, around 500 right now, probably won't get into the playoffs. This could be like a playoff atmosphere. And this is it, John Paul II right here needs to make something happen. Sam Suma had a shot. He throws it over to Wright, who turns it over. And now with less than 10 seconds left, Christian Academy's working it around and we have a foul. And holy cow, the Hilton Head Christian Academy Eagles, they're on the verge of pulling off a pretty nice win here. And certainly something we can call an upset seeing that they came in here with only five wins of the year. A win tonight would mean they've won four of their last five. Last five. And boy, for a young team like this to convert a win, that's only gonna grow positively for the future. Daniel Harrington misses the first one, and immediately Amir Cherry calls timeout. So we have 2.7 seconds left. John Paul II has the ball. 
They're down by two. Should be interesting to see what Coach Stacy Benedict comes up with. And despite, once again, the foul shots missed on both sides, but at this point, it's really coming back to haunt John Paul II. Yeah, it really is. I mean, these these last seconds of this ball game are going to be crucial for John Paul II. It's, it's going to come down to those things that I mentioned earlier. I know it sounds redundant, but, you know, playing solid defense, sticking to your man like glue, as I like to say. And then when you get to the free throw line, you got to make them. Just playing good, solid, fundamental basketball. And this has been a really, really well-played game on both ends at times. It's a tightly contested match. It's going to be a great last 20 seconds. So here we go. Just under three seconds left. It's time for Amir Terrier, one of his teammates, to step off and step up. But this team's going to continue to maybe have some chance at a postseason. And it's going to have to be a full court play for them. There's a throw into Batiste. He's going to have to shoot it up from three point land. He's going to miss. And Hilton Head Christian Academy comes down with a 46 to 44 win. Probably the highlight of their season. You can see the joy that they all have. Coach Mac Tamanen has to be pleased with them. What we're going to do is get both of them. We're going to get he and the MVP, Floyd Hargrove, for an interview. Once again, Hilton Head Christian Academy 46, John Paul II 44. We'll be back with the post game right after this. Stay tuned for the Covert Air High School Basketball Series right here on WHHI TV Sports. Club Car of Hilton Head, an authorized dealer of the finest golf, utility, and transportation vehicles in the industry. We have a full selection of electric, gas, PTV, golf, and utility vehicles. We are family owned and operated and value our customer relationships. Fully staffed with factory trained technicians and can service your cart at your home or business. We provide an outstanding customer experience from sales to service. Come check us out. We are proud to be Hilton Head's only authorized club car dealer. John Paul II Catholic School is committed to preparing students for the challenges of life through intellectual, physical, and spiritual programs that advance academic excellence, leadership, service to others, while fostering discipleship according to the traditions of the Catholic faith. Our core values of service, holiness, integrity, excellence, leadership, and diversity are represented by the shield of our mascot, the Golden Warrior. Call or click today to see all the great things going on at John Paul II Catholic School. Hilton Head PSD offers convenient and secure online billing. Just have your PSD bill handy and click on the online bill payment button at hhpsd.com. You'll be guided through the steps to establish your online billing account. Their payment options allow you to set up recurring credit card payments, you can view your consumption history, and more. Remember to have your PSD bill handy when you visit hhpsd.com to get started. Hilton Head PSD, we're always working for you. A third of American families say they feud over the thermostat setting, and the battle can lead to higher energy bills by bouncing the temperature up and down. Find a temperature that everyone can live with, then avoid the feud. Set it and forget it. A tip from Covert Air. And we welcome you into the post-game show, and you saw it happen right here on WHHI Sports, the Hilton Head Christian Academy Eagles. They hung there all night. They got down by a little bit late in the third quarter and early in the fourth quarter. But the word perseverance was never more applicable than it was tonight. They hung in there. They came back, took the lead late in the game, held on. They win it 46-44, to maybe knocking John Paul II out of the playoff picture. Coach, nice effort tonight. Have to be pleased with this win. Oh, I'm, I'm elated. It's probably one of the biggest in the program for a long time. You know, this team uh, about two months ago beat us by 25, 26 points. And, uh, you know, like I told the guys, I said it's all about respect, and we have to go earn it. You know, they beat our butt. We got to come out each and every night and earn it. And they did tonight. Well, last time they got you, really the big difference was that 25 to 2 second quarter. Other than that, you played them pretty even. Granted, when you fall behind by that many, it's hard to stay motivated. But boy, the defense was tenacious tonight. We have a little MVP something for Floyd Hargrove here in a sec. But Lucas O'Grady underneath, how big was he tonight? Oh, Lucas is huge. You know, he's him and Robert are two centers. And again, when he can give us points, uh, it's a win win for us. You know, he battled under there, he always does. And like I said, when he can come up with points off those rebounds, it's just extra special. 
With this young team now, you've won four of the last five. I would say, you know, setting the table for the future, it's happening. Oh, no doubt. We're peaking at the right time. And like I said, you know, these guys know. They know they're young. They know they're up against the battle each and every night. They have a great attitude about it. And as you saw tonight, what we're capable of. Well, I've got a little something for the gentleman here to your left, Mr. Floyd Hargrove. Unofficially, I had him for 16 points tonight. Floyd, you ran the point very, very nicely. You kept the team in the game. You hit a couple big three-pointers coming down the stretch. I'm going to congratulate you and give that to you, for starters, for being the MVP tonight. Talk about what was happening out there. It seemed like at times the game was a little slow-paced tonight, and then it went ahead and picked up. How did you see it out there? Uh, well, that's what we came in. Um, we came in that, wanted that to happen. Coach told us before the game that we had to come in and just slow it down. We know we'd like to get out and run the ball. So if we slow it down and work our game, we know we just come with the win. As a young team, obviously there's a lot of challenges, which means in a lot of situations you're going to be oversized, overmanned. To a certain extent, that was the case tonight. You were giving up some height underneath, certainly to their big men. But boy, oh boy, the team just was tenacious, and they really hung in there. Yeah, like you said, just about, you know, Coach always talks about just pride and having uh, good support for the, uh, the school. That's what we came out and showed tonight. Coach, let me ask you. He's, our, he's your point man. What does he bring to the table every day for practice? Because obviously this is the guy that's going to have the ball in his hands most of the time. He's got to be the team leader. Yeah, you know, Floyd's instrumental for us, and uh, I'm always getting on him. And I get on him hard. You probably see that sometimes out here. And we have a lot of talks throughout the day. No, I didn't see any of that. <laughs> we understand each other on a high level, and uh, we're both competitors. We both want to win. And having been there and done that before, I'm just trying to pass that along to him to make him the best player he can be. Moving on to the next few games, how do you feel? I feel great. You know, coming off this win, it's huge. You know, we got Hilton Head prep again on Friday. Again, they're the team to beat, you know. Um, they're the team to beat. So we're going we're gonna to lace them up. We're going to enjoy this one tonight. We're going to get after it tomorrow and see what we can do with Hilton Head prep. Coach, congratulations. Floyd, congratulations to you. And we'd like to thank all of you for joining us here on WHHI Sports. For our production team, I'm Chris Tremblay. We'll see you next time.